Hi guys, over here. Today I want to talk about an often overlooked but actually very important topic and that is composition. Because as you see, nothing in this frame has changed except for my position in the frame. But me moving over from the side to the center of the frame has actually made this whole composition in this video work now. Whereas when I was before over there, you would have asked yourself the whole time, why is he over there? This just doesn't look right. Whereas if I'm in the center of the frame, you're just happy to watch the video and everything just feels nice and flows nicely. And that's exactly what I want to talk about today. What makes good composition? And I want to share my top tips with you that allow you to master composition and take much more pleasing to look at images. My tip number one, and that's not only true for composition, but photography in general, is to do things deliberately. Always think about before you're taking an image, how am I taking this image? And why am I taking this image from this exact position where I'm at right now? I know often in the field, we see an exciting bird, we start running after the bird and we forget everything else and then it's suddenly in front of us, so we just snap away. But then we come home to the computer and we look at the photos and we see, oh, there's a branch going through the background, there's something else I could have done maybe by stepping to the left or to the right. And I really want you to start thinking about these things before you actually take the image in the field. And you will become a much better photographer overall. I know you don't always have a lot of time in the field when there's a bird that's hopping from branch to branch, but what I try to do is while I'm following the bird, I'm always constantly thinking in my head, what is the best composition and what is the elements that I want to include in this frame or definitely want to exclude from this frame. So by doing that in the field and constantly thinking, could I change my camera settings? Maybe I should more wide open to get a more blurry background, or maybe I should stop down more to get more depth of field, or maybe I should step to the left to have a more open, nice looking background, or maybe I should step to the right because I don't have that branch going through my frames. And so these are all the things that go through my head constantly when I'm in the field looking at a bird. I know it makes the whole process a little bit more difficult, but I know that you can really benefit from constantly thinking, why am I doing it? How am I shooting it? Are my settings right? Could I improve my overall image by moving closer or moving further out? For instance, you might have an awesome looking bird, but it's on a really ugly perch. So you could potentially grab an extender, go a bit closer and get an epic headshot instead of a full body shot that in the end you don't really know what to do because you don't like the perch you're sitting on. So deliberately deciding in the field what's right will definitely improve your photography. And there's actually one thing that has made our life a lot easier with the addition of the animal or especially bird eye autofocus for us bird photographers and that is the bird eye tracking in the field allows us now to actually do composition and focusing at the same time in the field. With DSLR cameras in the past, we always had to do the dreadful focus and then recompose to get the good composition. And if the bird was fast moving through your frame, this actually was quite a big challenge. And sometimes you were able to move the autofocus field over to one side so you could stay with the focus on the bird. But oftentimes the focus fields of the DSLR cameras wouldn't reach to the edge of the frame. Whereas with the mirrorless cameras, you can track the bird throughout your whole frame and you focus on the composition and the camera will keep the focus on the bird. So this is one aspect that I really enjoy about the new mirrorless cameras because it actually makes composing our images a lot easier in the field. Tip number two is Think of the elements that affect your image beyond just your main subject. Because when we look at the bird image, typically there are at least two, three, four more elements that play a crucial role in composing our image. One of those things that I personally find very difficult to deal with is reflections. Because reflections often force your hand when it comes to composition. Because personally, I think there's nothing worse than having a crystal clear reflection and then they're just chopped off in the middle or it feels like you chopped off the bird's head in the reflection. So in that case, you will have to find a position where you can have the bird and the whole reflection nicely framed in your frame. But with water birds especially, I often find that 
if you try to include the whole reflection, it pushes your main subject quite high into your frame, creating a kind of overall funny looking frame. Personally, I often like to exclude the reflections deliberately by going quite low to the water surface so I don't get as much of a reflection. If I'm higher up, I usually see more of a reflection. So by going low, I can actually avoid having too much of a reflection. I can have less frame at the bottom and frame my whole bird a bit more nicely with just a little bit of water below the bird and then more background on top giving me personally an overall nicer composition. What do you think about reflections? Have you struggled with them? Let me know in the comments. Another element I want you to think of is your background. You're looking through your viewfinder and you will see some sort of background. So don't just take what's there. Think in your mind, how can I change to look at my background? If you go lower, you might be able to include a bit of the blue sky in your background. If you go higher, you can exclude like an unpleasant horizon line from your background. So these are all things that I really want you to start thinking about in the field that will make you take much better images. Another element that influences our bird images probably the most is actually the perch the bird is perched on. Because typically the perch, especially if the branch already has a predetermined shape and style. So what I usually try to do either when I set up a perch or when I have a natural perch somewhere, I compose my image even before the bird arrives in a way that even without the bird, the image would already look like a nice composition, giving me a really nice flow through my image. And then when the bird actually arrives, I get a really nice shot. However, the shape of the perch also influences how I would want the bird to sit on my perch. Because if I have a perch that goes through my frame like that, ideally I want a bird that sits on the perch in a way that follows the flow of the perch and completes the composition. What I don't like and what I try to avoid is having images where the perch goes a certain way and then the bird sits on it the other way around, kind of creating an X because that kind of ruins the flow of the image for me. So what I definitely always try to do is have a nice perch that's parallel to my sensor and kind of going in on the frame on one side and then out of the frame on the other side. Another nice option you can have as well is like an interesting looking upright perch where the bird can just sit on top and you get some really nice images that way. And sometimes there are simply elements in the field that we can't avoid, but that's why we have things like Photoshop. So we can go in afterwards, crop our images a little bit more because we couldn't get closer for instance, or use the great variety of tools like the clone tool, patch tool, and a lot of other tools that allow us to remove distracting elements from the images. I know some of you might not want to do that, but I think it can be a very effective way of dramatically improving your images. And if you want to know all about how to set up perches in the field, or how to remove distracting elements and edit your images to absolute perfection so that they look amazing, Make sure to check out my video Perch where I show you step by step how I work in the field or my master class where I show you step by step how I edit my images and how I remove distracting elements from images. So make sure to check out these two in the description and there's a great bundle price available as well. The bird's pose is obviously my third and very important tip when it comes to composition because the way the bird sits the way the bird looks, the direction the bird looks is very important when it comes to your composition. Because typically what we want to do is always give this bird a bit of space in the direction it's looking at. If it's looking straight at the camera like I do now, then a sort of central centric composition can work quite well in like a tighter crop where the bird is just looking right at you and you can make a dramatic image by just having the bird right in the center of the frame. If you have a bird and you make it look right out of the frame, it will just not look right. The same is true for flight shots actually. With flight shots, you always want to give a bit of space in the direction that the bird is flying. If the bird is looking in a certain direction, I would always try to place it on the opposite end to where it's looking at so that there's nice space in front of the bird. It can 
look into and have that nice breathing room that creates an overall nicer to look at composition. What do you do if there's more than one bird in your frame? This can be a tricky one. If the birds are looking in a certain way, I leave space that way. And if there's a lot of birds that look in all sort of different directions, I typically go for a nice centric composition. And so far that has worked pretty well in the field for me. So is there a perfect pose for bird photography? Personally, I like to have a bird that's sitting on a perch and then the bird kind of turns nicely on top of the perch. So I see the side of the bird, I see a bit of the belly, I see the whole face, it's looking right at me and I have the tail uninterrupted on this side of the perch. That's definitely my favorite pose and always what I'm trying to wait for in the field. And that's also typically the pose that works the best on a perch and that flows nicely with the shape of the perch. Tip number four is look at the Fibonacci golden ratios. We find them everywhere throughout our whole universe, be it the stock market or be it photography composition. So check out and read up on them. Personally, I don't really follow any rules when it comes to cropping or composition, but I seem to have a good eye that allows me to naturally find a pleasing composition in my images. And funnily enough, if I overlay my images with the Fibonacci golden ratios, there's actually one ratio that almost perfectly aligns with all my compositions that I just do with my bare eye. So even unknowingly, I've been following one of the golden ratios for the composition of most of my images. When we look at my images, we will see that quite often the bird and the perch are nicely lined up with one of the diagonal lines in the frame. And then the bird is slightly offset to one side, giving it a little bit more space in the direction that it's looking at. And that style of composition has worked very well for me and that's what I follow throughout most of my images and that often lines up very well also with the Fibonacci golden triangle. And here's another example now with the Cape Baron geese that I recently took and that image could almost not line up any more perfect with the golden triangles. So this is typically the composition element that I strive for the most and that I personally feel like flows the most in the bird images. There are a lot of other golden ratios like the rule of thirds or the Fibonacci golden spiral, but they seem to work better with images where the birds are a bit smaller in the frame. So interestingly, a lot of times when I crop my image, you can see that the eye of the bird is actually kind of in the center of the frame with the majority of the bird's body being opposite of the direction the bird it's looking in. So the flow of the bird is in the diagonal and the eye of the bird is in the center of the frame, instantly grabbing the attention of the viewer. And if you're not sure about the ratios and you feel like you don't have developed yet a good eye for composition, there's actually a really cool trick you can do in Lightroom. If you go to develop, click onto the crop tool and then you press the O button, then you can actually toggle through all the Fibonacci golden ratios and they overlay on your image and you can follow those ratios as you crop in the ratios move with your crop tool and you can actually then crop your images in a way that they perfectly align with the golden ratios. And these golden ratios are just mathematical formulas that just appear throughout nature. And so if we crop an image and compose an image with these rules, it will just always feel very pleasant to our eyes. When it comes to cropping, there's also something else we should be talking about and that is, what's the purpose of this crop? Am I going to post this image on Instagram, for instance, or do I want to hang it onto my wall and it will be printed really big? Or am I planning to offer my images to magazines, for instance? If I'm going to post on Instagram, I would always recommend a tighter crop because a tighter four by five crop will display much larger on people's phone screens. So naturally, they're more likely to interact with your images. But for instance, if you want to hang a picture on a wall printed really large, I would usually just say crop much looser because if the image is so big on your wall, it will look nicer if the birds are not too big. And for instance, if you want to sell your images to magazines, you have to consider with your cropping that people, for instance, for the cover, 
need to have enough space around the bird to place all the text. So too tight composition will also not work there. Tip number five, use composition to your advantage and to make a statement with your images because you can really tell a story depending on where and how you position the bird and the elements of your image in your frame. To master this, this will take a little bit of time, but I think it's definitely worthwhile exercise. Learn to kind of see those golden ratios with your eyes already in your field so you can create really pleasant composition and it will definitely help you as a photographer. It will make you a better photographer if you always think about why am I shooting this? How am I shooting this? And it will also help you to create much more stunning looking final images. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope this will help you to create better composed or more pleasing to look at images. And I wanna know from you, how are you going with composition? Has this been a topic that you always struggled a bit with? You were not sure? Have you heard about the golden ratios? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the content, please make sure to give me a like and share the content with your friends and also subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in my next video very soon. Bye guys.